If you already watched part one of our Great Black Inventors video, then welcome back. If you have not watched it yet, you can always watch it after this video. Did you know that black Americans invented many things, but enslavers often took credit for their inventions? The patent system, which started officially in 1787, was not open to African Americans born into slavery, as they were not considered citizens. Well, now you know. Between 1914 and 1918, the world was in chaos. It was World War I. Then 1939 to 1945, we witnessed another world-changing event, World War II. The gas mask played a key role in both world wars, and those who survived World War I and World War II due to the gas mask have one person to thank, Garrett Morgan. Morgan was born in 1877 in Paris, Kentucky, to Sidney Morgan and Elizabeth Reed, two former enslaved people. Morgan only received a sixth grade education at Branch Elementary School in Clayville, Kentucky, but that did not stop him from reaching his full potential as an inventor. In 1914, Morgan first created and patented the Safety Hood to help firefighters navigate smoky building after watching firefighters struggle to breathe while battling fire. He later modified it to carry its own air supply, making it the world's first effective gas mask. While early devices for breathing protection existed, Morgan Invention is viewed for its practical design and effectiveness in real-world situations. On November 20, 1923, nine years after inventing the gas mask, Garrett Morgan invented the three-signal traffic light featuring the yellow signal that alerts drivers when to yield. Morgan developed his design after witnessing a carriage accident in a busy intersection in Cleveland, Ohio. Morgan's design inspired the modern three-way traffic light currently used in the United States, Britain, and Canada. Prior to his invention, traffic signals just said, stop or go. He later sold the rights to his patent to General Electric for $40,000. Morgan also discovered and developed a chemical hair processing and straightening solution, and he later created a successful company called G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company. Henry Boyd Henry Boyd was born into slavery in Kentucky in 1802. After purchasing his freedom, he invented what came to be known as the Boyd Bedstead, a corded bed created with wooden rails connected to the headboard and footboard. He foresaw problems obtaining a patent, so he partnered with a white craftsman and had his partner apply. The Boyd Bedstead utilizes a right and left wood screw process with swelled rails, making it stronger and easier to assemble compared to traditional methods. His business grew successful and he employed both blacks and whites workers. His furniture factory in Ohio supplied hotels and households throughout the South and West with Boyd's Bedstead. Boyd became one of the most successful black businessmen in the 19th century. Benjamin Thornton Montgomery Montgomery was born into slavery in Loudoun County, Virginia in 1819. As an enslaved man, he served as a companion to his enslaver's son, who taught him how to read and write. In 1836, Montgomery was sold to Joseph E. Davis, who was the older brother of future Confederate President Jefferson Davis. There, he improved his literacy and developed skills as both a mechanic and a surveyor. In 1842, Benjamin Montgomery opened a retail store on Hurricane Plantation, selling general merchandise to both slaves and their enslavers. Montgomery developed a personal line of credit with wholesalers in both Natchez and New Orleans, and bought and sold goods in his own name. Montgomery demonstrated his mechanical ability by inventing a boat propeller. Montgomery's enslaver, Davis, tried to take credit for the propeller invention and patented himself, but the patent office rejected him because he was not the true inventor. Then, Davis attempted to have patented in Montgomery's name, but U.S. law, however, did not allow enslaved people to hold a patent, so Davis's effort failed, and Montgomery's invention went unrecognized. We must acknowledge that this was a valuable invention as it facilitated the delivery of food and critical items. Alice H. Parker Alice Parker was born in 1895 in Morristown, New Jersey, and later attended classes at Howard University Academy in Washington, D.C. 
The Academy was a high school connected to Howard University, and in 1910, Parker earned a certificate with honors from the Academy. She is known for her patented system of central heating using natural gas. Granted on December 23, 1919, Parker's patent was not the first for a gas furnace design, but it uniquely involved a multiple yet individually controlled burner system. In the 1920s, using natural gas to power a heating furnace was a revolutionary idea that conserved energy and paved the way for the central heating systems we all have in our homes today. What was unique about Parker's design was that it allowed cool air to be drawn into the furnace, then conveyed through a heat exchanger that delivered warm air through ducts to individual rooms of a house. The concept of central heating was around before Parker was born, but her design was unique because it used natural gas as fuel instead of coal or wood that had been previously used. Parker is said to have been inspired to create her design because she felt her fireplace was not effective enough in warming her home through the cold New Jersey winters. Her invention was convenient because it meant that people did not have to go outside and chop or buy wood. It also decreased the risk of house or building fires that heating units posed by eliminating the need to leave a burning fireplace on throughout the night. Although her initial designs were never used, her idea that natural gas and ducts could be used to heat different areas of a house was a major step towards the heating systems we use today. We know that the light bulb itself was perfected by Thomas Edison, but the innovation used to create longer lasting light bulbs with a carbon filament came from African-American inventor, Louis Latimer. Latimer was born on September 4, 1848 in Chelsea, Massachusetts to former enslaved parents. He began to work in a patent law firm in Boston after serving in the military for the Union during the Civil War. There he worked on many inventions, including the development of the telephone alongside Alexander Graham Bell. He helped develop a more efficient transmitter that improved the quality of the sound, and his drawings were crucial for securing the telephone patent. He was recognized for his talent drafting patents and was promoted to head draftsman, where, in 1874, he co-invented and patented an improved bathroom for railroad trains with Charles Brown, called the Water Closet for Railroad Cars. He moved to Connecticut in 1879, and by 1880, he was hired and to work as an assistant manager and draftsman for the U.S. Electric Lighting Company, which was owned by Hiram Maxim, a rival of Thomas Edison. While there, Latimer patented a new filament for the light bulb, using carbon instead of more incendiary materials like bamboo that were commonly used for filaments. The addition of the carbon filament increased the lifespan and practicality of light bulbs, which had previously died after just a few days. Latimer worked with Maxim to improve the production of carbon filaments. His invention of the method to manufacture carbon filament to make light bulbs mass production was patented in 1882. In 1884, he was invited to work with Thomas Edison at the Edison Electric Light Company. While working with Thomas Edison, they focused on the development and commercialization of the incandescent light bulb. Before this innovation by Latimer, the light bulb lasted just a few days. Now, the light bulb can last months thanks to Louis Latimer. On February 11, 1918, Latimer joined the Edison Pioneers, becoming the first black person to join this group of 100. Latimer was also an early advocate of civil rights. He used his influence and connections to advocate for more rights for black people. He sadly passed away in Queens, New York in 1928 at the age of 80. If you enjoy our video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe so you do not miss our upcoming videos.